It's frankly baffling just how many problems the 777X has had. Even though it shares its heritage with the legacy 777, which is one of the safest, most reliable jets ever made, the 777X has faced innumerable setbacks. Coming into 2024, the plane was already five years behind schedule. But within the last month, Boeing's uncovered a new problem that'll almost certainly cause the timeline to slip again. With the 777X perpetually in limbo and with no clear end in sight, now seems like the perfect opportunity for Airbus to strike. By offering a stretched version of the A350, Airbus can help save these beleaguered 777X customers from what's been an absolute nightmare, and they can do it without spending very much money. So, will they actually do it? Let me explain. Before getting into it today, I want to talk a little bit about burnout because it's honestly something that I'm suffering from. As the channel has grown, so have my responsibilities. Not only do I have to put out quality videos, but now I have to do things like negotiate with advertisers, manage airline and OEM relationships, and of course I'm traveling a ton. Now obviously your positive feedback on the videos helps me to push through, but sometimes I honestly just need someone to talk to to work through that stress and get things off my chest. And that's why I'm a huge advocate for therapy. And thanks to today's sponsor, BetterHelp, engaging with a therapist has never been easier. Since BetterHelp is 100% online, it's super accessible. You have access to over 30,000 licensed therapists at your fingertips. They offer an affordable way to address all sorts of personal challenges. And BetterHelp's easy but comprehensive onboarding process ensures that you're matched with the right therapist to address your specific needs from day one. And of course, if for whatever reason you don't gel with that therapist, it's always free and easy to switch. If there's something that's troubling you, or you just need a sounding board to talk through life's challenges, then maybe you should give BetterHelp a shot. You can let BetterHelp connect you to a therapist who will support you all from the comfort of your home by visiting betterhelp.com explains, or by using the code Kobe explains during sign up. When you do so, you'll enjoy a special discount on your first month. Plus, BetterHelp will know that I sent you, which really helps me out. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video, and now let's get back to it. First, let's talk about the 777X's troubled development. Signs of trouble emerged before the plane even took to the skies. During an overpressure test in 2019, its fuselage unexpectedly tore open. Now this failure came at pressure levels that the 777X is never going to see in commercial service, and it wasn't deemed a safety threat. But nonetheless, this was a bad omen. Problems persisted when the plane actually took flight. One of the more concerning was an uncommanded pitch event where one of the test planes pitched up or down without the pilot's input. While the exact cause of the upset isn't known to the public, it is reminiscent of the MCAS issues that played the 737 MAX. Oh, and there were problems with the engines too. In 2022, an engine temperature spike forced Boeing to pause testing for several weeks. Now these problems are a strong indicator that the 777X just lacks design maturity. In fact, sources have shared with me that the 777X has had a lot of teething issues during testing. Perhaps that's why the 777X flight test campaign has racked up over 3,000 flight hours, more than any other program in history. Simply put, it's just taken Boeing a really long time to get the plane to a mature state. Nonetheless, it seemed that the 777X was finally ready for prime time, or at least that was the sentiment about four weeks ago. In mid-July, Boeing got clearance from the FAA to start certification testing. Cert testing is totally different from just regular old flight testing. Here, members of the FAA actually fly on board the plane, monitoring its performance and gathering data. And the start of this phase seemed to indicate that first delivery was just over the horizon. But all of that progress, all of that hope, has just come to a screeching halt. In mid-August, engineers conducting a routine post-flight inspection discovered a pretty major problem. They found that a crucial structural component, known as a thrust linkage, had been completely severed. 
a thrust link is designed to transmit the power of the engine to the airframe, essentially helping to push the aircraft forward. This is clearly not a component that you want to break. Now, the root cause of the failure is still unknown. What Boeing is probably hoping is that it was just a defective part, that it can easily be switched out so that certification can continue. But that might be wishful thinking. Upon further inspection, Boeing found that every one of its 777X flight test vehicles were experiencing similar problems. While we definitely can't say for certain at this point, it sure seems like the plane is suffering from a fundamental design flaw. If that's the case, things are about to get bad for Boeing. It'll likely mean that they have to both redesign the component and retest it before certification can resume. Considering the plane is already five years behind schedule, this is not welcome news. Suffice it to say, customers are gonna be pissed. Influential airlines like Qatar and Emirates have staked their future on the 777X. And while both airlines have expressed deep frustration with its delays, they keep rewarding Boeing with repeat business. In just the past year, both have placed further orders for the type. These deals were made with the expectation that the type had put its problems behind it. But that's just clearly not the case. Now, I want you to imagine for a second that you're an executive at Qatar or Emirates. How do you think you'd feel about this whole situation? You have placed so much trust into Boeing, but time and time again, they have not rewarded that trust. At what point do you say enough is enough? At what point do you start hedging against the 777X instead of doubling down on it? If you start to diversify your fleet and explore other options, it'll help to insulate you in case the program has any further setbacks. I'm sure there are plenty of airlines that would love to do this, but the only problem is that the 777-9 doesn't really have a competitor. Airbus has neglected to challenge it head on. Its closest rival, the A350-1000, seats about 50 to 75 fewer people. Now, Airbus has been steadfast in its belief that the A350-1000 is plenty big, but I'm just not convinced that that's actually true. In recent years, we've seen more and more airlines delay the retirement of their gas-guzzling A380s. Meanwhile, the 777X continues to win deals despite being a lemon. These are strong positive indicators that something like an A350 stretch would have a place in the market. And when you consider that the A350 platform is more modern, more efficient, and more reliable than the 777X, it may actually be able to steal away Boeing customers that are just fed up with its problems. Long story short, Airbus could use the 777X's newest problems as a springboard to get an A350 stretch off the ground. But what would the plane actually look like? Well, that's kind of the beauty of this whole situation. An A350 stretch doesn't really need to look all that different from the A350-1000. All Airbus needs to do is add about 4 meters in length to the fuselage. Doing so will add roughly 40 extra seats in economy without having to do things like redesign the wing, the gear, or add another exit door. Not only that, but Airbus actually has the resources to make this plane a reality. It's just wrapped up flight testing of the A321 XLR, and the only other jet it has in the pipeline is the A350 Freighter, and an A350 Stretch could actually share resources with and draw inspiration from this plane. It's clear that Airbus engineers are in a far better position than Boeing to take up a new project. And considering that the A350 platform is already quite mature, they could probably get the plane out before the end of the decade. That means it would enter service just a couple of years after the 777X, which seems like a win to me. I think the only real inhibitor to making this project a reality is with the engine. The A350 is powered exclusively by the Trent XWB, an engine that isn't particularly big. Its fan diameter is quite modest compared to that of the rival GENX. And while this hasn't been a problem for the smaller A350-900, it actually has been for the larger A350-1000. Rolls-Royce had to work really, really hard to squeeze extra thrust out of the engine, upsizing its core to overcome the smaller fan. 
Ultimately, the XWB's architecture is just barely big enough to power the A350-1000. Trying to upscale it further might be too tall a task. That being said, Rolls is investing a lot into upgrading the XWB platform. It's implementing new technologies from its ultrafan demonstrator into the engine, which will help improve both reliability and fuel burn. While we don't know a lot about what these technologies actually are, maybe they could help Rolls squeeze a little more thrust out of the XWB to help make an A350 stretch a reality. Now let's be honest here, Airbus doesn't need the engine to be perfect, it just has to be competent. While the rival GENX might be more efficient, the A350 platform as a whole still has the upper hand, thanks to its lightweight composite structure. In fact, some estimates suggest that the plane could have a 10% lower trip cost and a 5% lower seat mile cost compared to the 777X. Okay, so that's the case for building the A350 stretch. Building one would be pretty easy, its launch would be boosted by Boeing struggles, and it would hit the market at a time when demand for jumbos is surging. So, what exactly is Airbus waiting for? Well, I think there's one last thing that the company wants to see before they decide on next steps. It needs to see how airlines adopt 10 abreast. Most A350s flying today feature a nine abreast setup, but a few years back, Airbus re-sculpted the plane's sidewalls to add four inches of width to the cabin. This makes 10 abreast far more viable, and any airline who truly wants higher capacity can always just switch to this layout. But while it's true that a 10 abreast A350-1000 could match the 777-9's capacity, it's kind of a moot point if no one adopts it. And so far, response to 10 abreast has been tepid at best. While the wider cabin does make the layout more comfortable, it's still tight, with a max seat width of 17 inches in economy. That'll make it the narrowest in the industry, and airlines have been concerned that it'll compromise the customer experience. As a result, just one new carrier, Philippine Airlines, has actually adopted 10 abreast since the new cabin was announced. Even Indigo is rumored to adopt a more traditional 9 abreast layout for its upcoming A350s. If even this low-cost darling is not on board, then maybe it's a sign of things to come. Ultimately, Airbus will probably wait and see if 10 abreast gains more traction. If it does, then great, it'll have an offering that can actually match the capacity of the 777-9. But if it doesn't, well, maybe it's finally time to greenlight the A350 stretch. This will allow Airbus to play the hero, giving customers some relief from the 777X nightmare. So what do you guys think? Should Airbus stretch the A350 further, or is it a waste of time? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Oh, and if you made it this far in the video, hopefully that means I've earned your like and subscribe. Those simple actions are what keep the channel growing, so if you wouldn't mind hitting them, I would greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much to my patrons for helping to make this video possible. If you like what I do and want to help the channel grow, go ahead and check out this link right here. Thanks again for watching, and until I see you again, don't forget to look up.